I'll try to be quick because we are all hungry. And uh, so I'm going to show you just a few software. Yeah. Can you the mic? Yes. <laughs> well, not too close, but yeah. um, I'm going to show you a few softwares that have been developed throughout the years uh, around Matroska. Uh, basically, the main ones that are used by most people. Um, so there is uh, MKV Tunix, which is a, a batch of different softwares together. Uh, there's MKV Merge, MKV Info, MKV Extract. Uh, so we're going to see today uh, MKV Merge, which is the software that's used to produce uh, Matroska files. Uh, a lot of you know FFmpeg, but for a long time FFmpeg didn't write in Matroska files, and MKV Merge was the software to use. And it's still the best software it writes. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of features that uh, are not supported yet by FFmpeg. Uh, so let's first start uh, to create a file and put some stuff. So the in, in MKV Merge was designed to be able to transform any kind of uh, video source file uh, outside of FFmpeg. FFmpeg has support for almost everything that was ever produced. That's the goal. Uh, MKV Merge doesn't do that. It doesn't rely on FFmpeg. It uses its own code for all the formats it supports. Uh, but it, it supports a lot of formats. For example, here we're going to convert an MP4 into a Matroska file. Here you can see the tracks. Uh, I'll need details much later. So basically, you click here, it creates your file. You can add jobs so you can prepare a batch of tens or hundreds of files to convert and then run it and go do something else. Uh, so, so basically, MKV Merge and all the other tools, they are command line tools, but they also come with a GUI, for, which is more friendly for a lot of people. So here I'm creating the file that's here. That's the source file, that's the file that was created. You can see that it's actually smaller than the original file uh, because Matroska removed all of the stuff that's uh, default and also uh, uses usually less space. And uh, but nothing was lost from the original file. Every uh, bits that are useful have been transformed into Matroska stuff. Um, so. You can attach any kind of file to a Matroska file. Uh, here, that's the cover. So the tangents is a music track. And that's the cover for the original CD. So I'm going to attach the cover to the, to the Matroska file. Uh, Dave mentioned that he wants to show that because uh, for digitization of a file, it might be important to keep a picture of a, or a scan or whatever of the original document that came with the physical format. And so you can put that scan or picture as an attachment in the file for future reference. So I'm going to create the file on the right. File is still there, and that's a bit bigger. Uh, so I can still open it in VLC. And if you look at the information of the file, inside it has extracted the cover that's inside the file. I found out it's a cover, and it's a JPEG because it's a nine type, so it uses that as a cover. We can also use 
another program that comes with MKV Tunix, that's MKV Info. So basically, any Matroska file, it can easily analyze once inside, a bit like what Jerome showed with this uh, tree thing, but uh, in a standalone program, again, it's, uh, it's originally a um, command line program, but there's a GUI that comes with it. By default, it doesn't show you the actual data, uh, interleaved data. It stops when the video and audio data starts, but you can show all elements and it's part in the whole file. And then you can see everything that's inside. So you have the frame, you can know exactly where it starts in the, in the file, what track it belongs to, uh, etc. the time and distance. And what I wanted to show is the attachment here. So you can see everything that's written with the attachment. The ID, new ID, is short for unique ID. Uh, basically, almost anything uh, in Matroska has an ID that can be referenced later uh, for tags. So for example, you could tag that file using that ID and say a lot of things like how you capture the the cover of the details the thing I know the job better than me. Uh, so that's where I'm taking the uh, There's another software that's uh, using MKV extract. Like if you want to extract that cover, then you can always have it. It shows you you can extract um, audio tracks, video tracks, attachments, if there are chapters or tags, you can do that. So we're going to extract those just the attachments. it should be able to extract about anything. It's also based on a command line tool that comes with uh, MKV Tunix, uh, but uh, the original author didn't do a GUI, that's a GUI that exists on the side. So we have our file with attachments. Now we can talk about tags. I think that's very important for you. Uh, so you can see here, you can select the, the tracks you can actually tag each track individually. So I prepared some tags which come in the form of XML files. So that's, so that's track one. That would be the video track. So you can put the director. There are two directors. And each element has to be separate. Uh, so that's the name of the two directors, the production designers for artists and engineers. Uh, the second track is the audio track. It's actually the music that was produced. So the track name is Tom Jones. And the band is uh, Simeon Mobile Disco. And that's the general track that we're going to put in the file. So it described at level 40, uh, in my work too much into detail, but basically uh, you can tag different levels. Uh, usually it's with chapters, you combine that with chapters, and you can tell, uh, for example, uh, it's easier explaining with uh, audio. If you have one track of a CD, you can tell that it's part of a CD box that comes with uh, multiple CDs, and that will be your collection, or uh, for video, you have uh, a season. If you have uh, an episode from a season from the whole show, then you can describe the whole show, that season and that episode, and then in that episode, the uh, scene and whatever, and you have a shot from the scene. Uh, so, in my example, I just described uh, level 40, so that's the track level. Uh, so again, this, the title of the track, the artist, and I added um, a custom 
tag because you can basically the tags are just a name and a string value or a, a integer value uh, and basically uh, you can add the official tags there's a list of official tags uh, is, there's a lot of stuff for all kinds of things that are you should probably move there first if you want to tag your stuff to make sure you're not reinventing the wheel so it's compatible with other system but if you want you can put your own tag uh, for example i'm going to put that tag in the file so back to the files so i will um, so track the video track this track one so it's here this track so you, I use the GUI, but you, you can do that in a command line in an automated way, depending on how you get your sources. So here we have. Put them at the end because it's easier to edit. But um, some other people prefer to put it at the beginning because you don't want, you want the meta information uh, before having to bring either reading all the data or sitting at the end and finding the end. Um, so here we see all our tags. So that's for level 14, that section. Uh, this section, yeah. so that's the directors, those directors. Uh, there's also mandatory element, that's the language that automatically put by himself. Uh, and we find we cannot not put a language, but normally, uh, see the default might be English. So if you put English, you can't write anything. All the tags we wrote, and also MKV merge added its own tag. Also, number of frame, number of type, duration for that track, because we're targeting the track. And for the other track, I think I wrote that one, uh, title, the artist, etc. So all the tags are there, and we can see some of them in VLC. Um, so here we have the title, the artist, the album, uh, more tags, except in VSC doesn't really show tags by track. It's something that's not supported yet. So we just picked, for example, the last director I could find in the tags. It's not very useful as it is. Uh, well, probably in VSC can do better tagging support, and we know that. Um, that's for tags. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to show you is a uh, file linking or segment linking. Uh, for example, you can uh, digitize a DV tape that has uh, 4 by 3 aspect ratio, ratio and 16 by 9 on the same tape. Uh, if you digitize that into Matroska, it has to be different segments. But you can still uh, put information in the Matroska file that says that's the data that actually came after this file, etc. So we're going to show how that works. Uh, sorry. So for to show how it works, I'm going to split uh, the source file in, in <coughs> chunks of 30 seconds. First, to see when there's no bit Done. So we have uh, nine files. So, for example, if I play that file, it lasts for 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, it's done. So that's basically the basic DV file 
DV parts that you will have with different uh, aspect ratio. Now we're going to do the split, but keep the information that these data are actually linked together. So we have this phase, and then now if I play the file number one, it starts at zero, but the duration is one, so that in the S3, and then it's with the first one. The first one, the first file is 30 seconds, but you can tell in VC, it tells actually that it's four minutes. That's basically the original um, duration of the whole file. So for example, you see after 30 seconds, it's going to play the next file. It, and even in VLC, uh, if the aspect ratio changes, VLC can handle that. It's not the case because it's the, all the same source. But if you have that, VLC can handle that. So you can the 30 seconds and the video will just continue playing. So that's an interesting feature. Uh, that's I think it doesn't exist much outside of Matroska and that's something I developed inside of the MSC to make sure it works properly and uh, you can even tell if you don't have files, you just keep them and etc. So that's basically my presentation. So the, the main tool that we use for years and people still use a lot is MKVMAT because it supports every feature that was ever added to my poster. Uh, even the one that nobody uses is still in there. Uh, so if you want to at least try stuff in my Troska and you don't know if it works or not, you can always use it there. And uh, it comes with other tools that can be useful and obviously VLC. Uh, for a long time I tried to make it uh, not the official, but the reference player for everything Matroska to make sure that all the features we have play in one place. It's the same I was uh, talking about the other day about the uh, DVD extraction. Try to make it work in VLC as a proof of concept to make sure uh, it's actually doable and we need to show that people can actually do it in two minutes. And that's it for me. Yes, oh, sorry, question. Can you, can you also strip files from another container? Uh, yes, well, yeah, you can see here the source is MP4. Oh, yeah. uh, you, the software allows for different kinds of splitting. So by size, if you want to put stuff on CD, you split by CD size. Or you take um, duration after a time code. Uh, you can create a time code file. For example, in the case of that DV tape, if you know where the format changes, you can create a file that says at this point in the video I want uh, a split. Uh, so you can create that file. And you can also say, I want a split at 30 seconds, but only uh, two files. Then you have the first file 30 seconds, and the rest will be for everything. I will use that often to get a Maybe file just for, for something short so I can make a small video. Everybody is hungry. Ah. Uh, can I attach several pictures and yes. how would it show you in VLC? Ah, in VLC, I don't know. But the files will be there. I can even attach the XML file.
at least for end user people and professional. You don't like, see any yes, you don't have a tree with everything. It's just I can create the file and show you in MKV for the, the data is there. And MKV extract if I find where it's extracting the data. <laughs> Yeah, from the split it probably could be an uh, attachment on the, uh, on the, either on the first file or the first file. To uh, one of the features of metadata and attachments. Um, like with a lot of archival files, like archivists are hesitant to make any change to the file because it invalidates the checksum. You have a brick in fixity for the whole file. But because of the internal <coughs> checksum features, like you can adjust the metadata and the attachments. And if your clusters have their own checksums, you can ensure that audiovisual data contained within the container is. is maintained exactly as is, even if you are adjusting metadata and attachments around it. Uh, in the performer project, as, we, as we've been like discussing aspects of the project with Archivematica, they kind of thought that the attachment metadata features in the context of this internal fixity kind of allows Metroska to be used as like an OAS object, where like at, in the life cycle of it being an archival information package, Additional like logs or context could be added to the file over time to say like here's a new log I did uh, like I had to do a new virus check on it that was not conceived of at the time it was acquired, or like uh, you know a new um, validation of the internal content um, you know so this this feature kind of allows all the stuff to be kind of packaged up together um, so I I'll launch this here it's on the hallway like. Um, we'll take a break for, we might go a little bit under an hour because we're uh, a bit behind, um, a bit, uh, yeah, late in our schedule. And then um, we've had developer presentations during the morning, in the afternoon we're going to have a couple like archival presentations, we're going to hear from uh, Daniel about a survey of archiving in the Balkans, and then we get to hear from Kieran O'Leary again, and I think the clickbait version of this title is like, when vendors say no, you'll never guess what happens next. Uh, so. Here we the last presentation, and then uh, we're going to take a quick break, uh, shuffle the room into an unconference style, and actually we'll introduce that, and we'll go at the podium. Okay, lunch.